Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today I am starting a short horror vlog. We are just going to be reading five teeny tiny quick fast paced horror books in this video. I mentioned it in my TBR. So we're going to be doing that. <laughs> we're just going to be reading some horror. I'm starting off with the most extreme of all the horror books. So if you don't like extreme horror, if you don't want to hear about, you know, trigger warnings, really, really intense content, you can go ahead and skip this. I thought I'd make it easy for you. <laughs> the rest of the books that I have in this video, I feel like are fairly tame for horror, you know? Um, definitely look up trigger warnings if you feel like you have them for any of these books, if you're sensitive to certain topics, but for me, I'm just going in and um, seeing what happens. So these are the four books that I will be reading later. One Bloody Thing After Another, Audition, You've Lost a Lot of Blood, and Fierce Kingdom. The book that I'm reading right now that I actually started last night is For the Sake Of by Judith Sonnet. I discovered this author through McKay and I am addicted to her writing. Absolutely addicted. I think this is so fun. <laughs> gore, sexual trauma, humiliation. So fun. No, this is an extreme horror book, but I think gore and, you know, just seeing how far we can push the envelope is so, so, so fun and entertaining. So I'm really liking this book so far, the 50 pages that I've read. Honestly, I don't feel like we're that, that intense. Like, obviously it's extreme horror, so there's going to be very graphic content. But for me, I feel like this wasn't too far on the spectrum of extreme horror. However, I've heard that it does get a lot worse. So I'm excited for that. But basically this book is kind of reminding me of The Chain by Adrienne McKinty, which y'all know that was one of my least favorite books of the year 2020. I hated it. It lives in infamy <laughs> uh, with the buddy read that I did with Caroline and Jess. We all just absolutely shat on that book. It should have been a novella. The first 80 pages were amazing. The rest of it, horrible. Reminding me of that because the chain is about this group that kidnaps children and then kind of blackmails the parent of the kidnapped child and says, you know, if you want your kid back, you have to kidnap another kid. So it's like a kidnapping chain that goes on and on and on. This is like a darker version of that where there's a group that kidnaps anyone, doesn't have to be a child, man, woman, other child, cat, dog. <laughs> I don't know, anyone. And the family members think, you know, they're gone for good. Then a few months later, they get a picture of their family member held at gunpoint with a note that says, we're gonna call you on this burner phone. And if you pass all these tasks, you will get your kidnapped family member returned to you unharmed. So the tasks are like really intense, humiliating. You have to like mutilate yourself, do like really just like gross, degrading things to yourself on video and send it to this group. And it's like some dark web shit, you know what I mean? Like creepy dudes are paying to watch this like humiliating, violent content. Ew, 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 ew. Honestly, I can handle the horror around like the tasks. The stuff that is like really getting to me and like scaring me and grossing me out are the descriptions of the men who like pay for this stuff. Just like, just like, uh, I can't, I'm gonna look at I'm gonna throw up. Thinking about this guy, one of the guys paying for this content, his name's Erwin, and we get like a very graphic, disgusting description of him. And I literally went to throw up the whole time. It's like, he just describing how he smells and that he like, he's like a larger guy and he doesn't shower. So he has like things growing in his folds of his skin. <laughs> I literally hate 90% of men that are written in thriller and horror books, but this gross man, ugh, I want to kill him. I hate him. I hope he dies. We are about to go into the first like real task um, that's going to be happening with our main character whose daughter was kidnapped and I'm ready to see the limit that she will have 
because I don't think there will be anything that she won't do to get her daughter back, which I love that. Um, this kind of has similar themes to like Survivor by J.F. Gonzalez, which is obviously one of my favorite books. Also a recommendation from McKay. This is McKay's Stan channel. We already know about it. Um, because of that concept of like, how far will you go? Um, what horrible things will you do? Will you murder another person to save the one you love? I love that moral dilemma shit. So we're going to continue reading this, but I'm dealing with some shit. I want to be able to read this book right now before I start my work this morning, but I literally woke up, y'all, this is crazy. I woke up to 78 emails from YouTube telling me that 78 of my videos, I no longer get the money from, from AdSense and monetization because, okay, it's every single vlog I've ever posted and it literally makes my blood boil. Like I fucking hate fucking hate YouTube. I fucking hate this. Go join my Patreon because I cannot believe this shit. So basically the vlog music that I use for like B-roll when I'm just like, you know, cooking, reading, blah, 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 blah. Um, it was royalty free. I found it on a royalty free music website. I've been using it for two years, like with no issues at all. Just randomly decided to get copyrighted and now I have copyright claims on every single vlog I've ever used that music in and I've been using it for fucking two years straight so this random Slavic company that copyrighted this random royalty free music is now taking all my money from those videos which I'm literally just a girl <laughs> I'm just a girl I'm just a girl out here trying to make it you know and dealing with the situation is so goddamn frustrating I I'm literally never gonna use any music again like I'm I'm literally gonna like record myself going la 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 and like use that as my b-roll music because I can't believe this shit I cannot believe it that this big ass company is just taking money from me a girl who's literally just trying to get herself out of debt like can you believe can you believe that I hate it. I hate it. I literally hate it. How can something be royalty free and then all of a sudden, surprise, they're snatching all your coins away. Like, so I'm dealing with that. I'm going to try to solve the situation and replace all those little teeny tiny snippets of when I have that music. You have to know what I'm talking about. You know the music that's like... Like if that music... Yeah, it's fucking me right now. So I am pissed and I'm gonna try to deal with that situation, but all I really wanna do is read this book. So when I get back to it, I will let you know. Also, another side note, if you're seeing the tape on my fitness band, it's because I literally broke it because I was doing something. I literally don't know what I was doing, but I was waving my hands around, like gesturing wildly and I hit my wrist on the side of a door and it flew off my wrist and then smashed face down on the tile. So the like actual watch is fine, like she still works, but the band broke off. So, so I have a taped band to my wrist so I can still measure my metrics for the next few days until they send me a new one, but at least they're sending me a new one. I had to pay for shipping, but. Anyway, my morning's kind of been a little bit of a mess. I'm a little bit just like eh, all over the place. Um, hopefully I'll get a chance to read because that is the only way that I'm gonna feel serotonin today. Okay, goodbye. Okay, so I'm looking for replacement music. I don't think I can salvage any past vlog, which makes me want to snap. <laughs> It's fine. I found a song to replace my normal vlog music. I found one that's just like, you know, normal, happy. And then I found an angry one. There's a literally, you can search for moods on the YouTube like music library. And I found a mood called angry. And there's a band that is like partnered with the YouTube audio library called Nefex. And they sound like Chase Atlantic. Listen, I got into Chase Atlantic when I was watching Draco talk, TikToks, and like, like smut talk, y'all know what I'm talking about? Anyway, so 
I love Chase Atlantic. And like, can we just listen? Like, picture just like me doing a puzzle and making pasta, like my just pure little life, but with this like angry ass. Just listen, just give it a, give it a listen. You can fucking try me, try me. Try to take my monetization, fucking YouTube. You can fucking bite me. So yeah, if you hear that in this video or any others, just, just know that's why. <laughs> Cruising in my lane fast, call it high speed. I've been working. I'm at part three. This is going crazy. This is going off the wall. I only have about 30 pages left. So I'm definitely gonna try to finish it before I have to start work. This is is literally crazy. If you are looking for just like crazy, fast-paced, disgusting, offensive, <laughs> violent content this is for you and i like that it's not just like you know torture for no reason right like she's trying to get her daughter and i am rooting for her i'm rooting so hard and it's not just like this game which is what i thought it was going to be like now the husband is involved and the cops are involved and there's so much like so many moving parts and so many different things like okay I'm starting chapter 17. I'll let you know my final rating when I'm done. Hi, I am literally about to start working, but before I do, I just wanted to give you an update and tell you that I finished for the sake of, and honestly, I was mad about one thing that happened. I was really like, oh my God, no, like, come on. I don't want to spoil it, obviously, but I did not think that was what was gonna happen. I felt like it ruined the point of the book. And then another twist happened and I was like, oh my God, wait, no. Then maybe it's good that that other thing happened that I didn't like. And then another twist happened and I was like, ooh, ooh, I kinda like that. But then there's a piece of it that I don't like. Like it was just so hard. There were so many twists back to back to back to back that I was like, I did not know how to feel about it. I honestly still, don't quite know how I feel about it, um, but then I read the afterword and it really, I just really liked it. Um, Judith Sonnet, the author, says, I think it's sobering to engage with something dark like this every once in a while. I really wanted to get the audience to sympathize with the victim as a survivor of abuse myself. It often hurts my heart to see people cheer on the bad guys in horror movies. Even though there's a lot of horrible, evil, twisted, gory stuff, in this book, I never once wanted the reader to take any form of delight from it. What happens to Tabby is sad, and even though some of it is over the top, I wanted it to feel like a story ripped from the headlines. Hopefully I succeeded, but whether I did or not, I want to thank you for enduring this with me. And then she goes on to talk about like an alternate ending she was considering, and the next books that she is coming out with, and yeah, I don't know. Something about that just like, resonated with me sometimes things work out in a way that sucks and evil people don't get brought to justice and i feel like if that was the message like no matter what you do sometimes the thing that you are fighting for is not what it seems i feel like that is a message like it's it's definitely a message you know what i mean i just don't know if it's the message that i was expecting or wanting i don't know if this can be a five star book but like the majority of the book was so so just intense and such a ride like if you like horror movies if you watch horror movies and you're like nothing will ever scare me nothing will ever be intense enough for me you need to read this book because I'm that way as well. And this really like was on the edge of what I could handle. I feel like I'm gonna have to land around like a 4.5, four star, depending on 
how I think about it, how I marinate about it. I don't know. If you're interested on my final rating, I'm sure the review will be up on Storygraph by now. But yeah, that is that. That is for the sake of. The next book I think I'm going to pick up is You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. That is the author who wrote uh, Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. I loved that book and we have another queer horror story. I also hear that it has a book within a book trope and I love that. I love reading books about books and writing and things like that. So super excited to get into it. I will probably get into it after work. Uh, so I'll see you then. I'm done with seeing clients for today, which is why I'm in a professional shirt with sweatpants <laughs> because that is my uniform when I have telehealth sessions. <laughs> but yeah, I am ready to read. I actually do have to film my wrap up, but then I will have time to read. Right now at the current moment, I'm 30 pages into You've Lost a Lot of Blood and i really like it it's like kind of trippy kind of weird i like kind of don't know what's going on but those are my favorite kind of books i don't like it when you make it too easy for me you know i like to be intellectually stimulated so i'm really liking it i love the book within a book thing and i also love that very similar to eric laraca's first book you've lost a lot of blood is operating in like like a found footage kind of way like in things have gotten worse since we last spoke it was like oh these chats are like police evidence or blah 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 like it's like found footage vibes you know and with you've lost a lot of blood it's like ooh, these are like the found writings and this is what allegedly took place between these two guys like that were dating so basically this one guy is dead and his partner killed him and we have writings from them of like what was going on and the novella is like so interesting i i feel like i'm getting two for one like it's a two for one horror story deal and i'm obsessed so i really want to keep reading but i gotta film my fucking wrap up i don't know if any of y'all out there identify with this if you're a creator but isn't filming wrap-ups literally the worst especially when you read 20 books a month Okay, gonna go talk about 23 books. See you later. Look who's harm. He's trying to get me to go to the freaking gym with him. And I don't want to go. No. I stayed home from the gym with the puppies. Got my entire video edited. That is like 45 minutes long. Hello, can you focus? 45 minutes long. What a productive day. So much more productive than going to the gym, don't you think, Mochi? Okay, back to You've Lost a Lot of Blood. Here we go. <laughs> Just the design of these like novella within the book chapters are so cool and I just wanted to mention that but also the discussion about horror movies and horror movie tropes and what's scary something outright or like the unknown I, I I'm loving this if you are like a hardcore horror fan like myself I don't think there's any way you're gonna not like this. Like I am giddy reading this right now. It is so good. Hello vlog. I just made it to the halfway point of You've Lost a Lot of Blood and I'm still really loving it. Both storylines are super intriguing. I cannot wait to find out what is going on. There's like some speculative, almost like science fiction elements of the book within a book 
storyline that is really cool and the writing in like the main storyline is beautiful just like the dialogue I am in love with it. It is written so gorgeously. I can't get over it. So needless to say, I am getting that five star feeling. This book is so good. I am just simply in love with it. In love with the cover. In love with the fact that there's like no description and you're forced to go in blind. <sighs> Yay, I'm so glad this vlog is going well. I am about to make dinner for us and then I don't know what'll happen, but you'll be along with me. So see you soon. Hello vlog, what's up besties? I have such a busy day. I'm literally just about to run out the door because I have graduation this weekend. So I have to go like pick up some stuff for that. Um, I already graduated with my master's degree six months ago, but because I was a December grad, they were like, mm, you can't walk just walk six months later. And I'm like, I don't really get the point of that, but I'm gonna go walk so my mom can see me. That's literally the only reason why I am attending graduation. But besides the point, I literally have to go do a million things for that. Uh, then I'm meeting my friend for coffee and now I'm immediately going into four back-to-back -back therapy sessions. So we have a whole ass day. We have a whole ass day. And yes, I'm wearing the shirt from yesterday. Therapists get it. You have like a rotating work wardrobe. And listen, if I only had one, two sessions the day before, you best believe I'm not wasting a work shirt putting in the laundry. Oh, hell no, I'm gonna wear it again. Because guess what? My Tuesday people don't see me on Wednesday. My Wednesday people don't see me on Monday. They have no idea that I'm outfit repeating. Perks of seeing different people every single day with your job. Um, so yeah, I'm about to run out of the house, but I did want to tell you, I'm bringing along with me, you've lost a lot of blood because I have a feeling when I go to campus to like deal with all this stuff for graduation that I'm going to have to wait in a waiting room. So I'm going to hopefully finish this one while I am out today. I am at the 75% mark and I'm still really, really loving it. There was a big twist and I'm loving that. It's very like speculative time, not like time travel, but like dimensions and like messing with time. Y'all know that I love that kind of magical realism. So I am really vibing with this book. Unless something crazy happens at the end, it's gonna be a five star. Very excited. And I'm also bringing along uh, one bloody thing after another. I don't know if I'll be able to start it because again, running like a chicken with its head cut off until 7 p.m. But I'm gonna try. So that is the plan. See you later. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello, vlog. I read like 20 pages, <laughs> which means I only have like 20 pages left and you've lost a lot of blood. So I'm pissed that I can't finish it, but say lovey, I will have to finish it after this session. I just pulled up to the park where I do my little walk and talk sessions. I'm very excited to see my clients. Um, just had a cute little coffee and walk around the gardens with my bestie, my maid of honor. We love to see it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the update. Still loving the book. Hello vlog. Sorry if you can hear the AC literally screaming in the background of this clip. It is hot as balls. 
out here. Okay, it is 94 degrees. <laughs> I'm melting. I am absolutely melting. Uh, I have two out of four sessions done for today and I have a little break in between actually. So I finished. You've lost a lot of blood and I loved it. The ending was crazy. It was so cool to see how like the novella and the actual novella <laughs> so the book within a book and the actual novella how they were connected and what ended up happening with the couple and the people in the novella it was so so cool the way that this was crafted and I think it says a lot about you know mental health and a broken mind and what it is to dissociate versus you know feeling your experience even if it is painful hello why am I like paranoid by this book? I like thought there was somebody in the backseat, lol. Uh, and this is in broad daylight that it's like having me have this reaction. So wow, I'm obviously going to give this one five stars. But next, while I have the rest of my break before my next couple clients, I'm going to start one bloody thing after another, aka the book with the coolest cover I've literally ever seen. This is supposed to be some weird speculative horror. Um, it's about two little girls that just get into some um, shit <laughs> from what the back says they just get into all these adventures one of their moms is like crazy she has too many teeth and they have to lock her in the basement and feed her I don't know I don't know I don't know but I'm excited to get into it I love weird stuff um I might also go get some food because it is hot out here and I don't want to pass out in my next two sessions so I might need to eat something Okay, I just got a little bit into one bloody thing after another before I had to come back to my car and get my stuff together for my last couple sessions. But it is so good. This book slaps. It is so funny. It is so funny. I don't know. It's just like dry, dry, dry humor. And if you don't like dry humor, you're not gonna like this, but I am loving it so much. Like this little girl gets a police called on her and these two cops show up and she just looks at them and goes, that's so embarrassing. Y'all wore the same outfit today. <laughs> that is so funny. I'm sorry, that's so funny. There's a guy who's like walking his dog and the descriptions of the dog are just like, he's old. He just lays down in the middle of the sidewalk when he's trying to get walked. And the owner turns to his dog and just goes, walking you is an ordeal. <laughs> this is so funny. It's so weird. And there's like already some like little pieces of horror in it. Like people coughing up blood for no reason. There's like a little bit of light trauma talk, which I like, but Oh my God, it is so funny. And I'm only like 50 pages in, I'm obsessed. Hello vlog, I am home from work. You're currently hearing the sound of the good old air fryer. I'm making fish and chips for dinner. I'm gonna hang out with Cam for a little bit. And then hopefully I'll be able to dive back into one bloody thing after another because it literally has my heart right now. I cannot think about anything else other than my book. I am so excited to jump back into reading it. All the books I've read in this vlog so far have been absolute bangers. I am so hyped right now. I'm gonna pour a glass of wine. So this is the wine that I'm gonna be drinking tonight. It's from, I don't know if you can see that because it's in the fridge. It was in the fridge, but uh, it's from Boxed. It's a local woman owned wine company in Austin and it is so cool. It comes in this like beautiful packaging. Basically what they're trying to do is like be your house wine. So you find like a number one through nine, except they don't have 
seven and eight for some reason those are coming later because <laughs> uh, they just opened but you find a number that is like your favorite based on a quiz and then you get this huge box which is four bottles and it's a beautiful sustainable box shipped to you every month so it's like this is my house wine this is what i have on deck so my one that I have right now is number nine, which is a rosé for summer, but I think I'm gonna switch my next box to a one. Anyway, all this to say, I'm about to pour a glass, and if you wanna check out box, I will have my link down below. It is a referral link, but this isn't sponsored. I just really like them, and I like supporting local women-owned businesses. Okay, cool. Go. Well, at least I don't have to pay 500 quid after I've been slaughtered in mathematics. If you haven't seen that TikTok trend, I'm so sorry. But also it's my favorite thing ever. So you need to go watch it. I love all my UK queens. Bonjour, or I don't know. Y'all just say hello, right? Hello. Okay, goodbye. Oh, no. vlog do not laugh at my hair this is literally the best i could do <laughs> it is currently one o'clock and this is the first time i'm updating you i had a really great plan for today and jeff bezos ruined it i know that's not what you were expecting maybe what you were planning on hearing after um, i started that sentence but that's what happened i started reading this book after we were getting in bed uh last night and i just could not finish it and i was like you know what i only have like 80 pages i'll just wake up in the morning and finish it like i don't have clients or meetings or whatever until like three o'clock today so i'm like i can sleep in i can read my book in bed before i get up like what a what a move you know what i mean so i wake up i finish this book i'm gonna tell you about it in a moment it was probably 10 o'clock at this point and i'm like okay great 10 o'clock i still have five hours before i have to do things you know that's enough time to go on my run walk the dogs eat some breakfast get ready well my first step of the day is to go on my run and you know my little bandy band broke so i got my new one in the mail and this brand new right out the box girl I try to connect her, it's not connecting. So I do everything that I could think of and nothing works. So I call Amazon and this guy is trying to help me figure it out. He's like, maybe your app is like only gonna connect to that one. You're gonna have to like delete the app or delete all your data and then re-download it. And maybe you have to connect it to a different Amazon account. I'm like, no, I want it on my fucking Amazon account. So anyway, I'm on the phone with this guy for an hour and a half trying to get this stupid little watch figured out. He puts me on hold and hangs up on me. He hung up on me. He was like, you know what? This bitch is just a lost cause. Bye. Can you believe? Like all I needed was some help. All I needed was some help. It was your brand new product, Mr. Jeff, that was not working, that was defective. Called back and another lady helped me out for an hour and we got it done. We got it right. But at that point, it was already 1230 and I did not have time to go on my run, to take a little long meandering walk with the dogs, to have time to like luxuriate in the breakfast making and getting ready experience. So now I'm in a rush. That is how my morning has gone. Not even morning at this point. <laughs> I wanted to, you know, be in my little active girly self, do my little daily run. I have not run in I think a week now. Anyway besides the point. I wanted to update you <laughs> about One Bloody Thing After Another by Joey Camus. Camus, Camadou, Camadou. Y'all know I am not good with names. I gave this book five stars. It was literally everything I wanted it to be. I feel like this blurb on the cover just completely captures it. It's horror that's funny, scary, and surprisingly charming. 
I was so surprised how much I cared about these characters in just a short amount of time, how much I was endeared to the story and invested in what happened to them. It got weird, it got trippy, it got gory, it got intense, which is what I was looking for, but it was also like darkly comedic and very emotionally endearing. And it was just everything that I could have wanted and I wanna pick up everything this author has ever written because I love it. One of our main characters is dealing with her mom who died of cancer and also feeling romantic feelings towards her female best friend. And she's like working through that and all these horrifying things are going on behind the scenes. And like, it's just like, I cared about her so much and hearing about just her thought process and what she was going through was so interesting. There was this one quote that I put on my story because I couldn't not and she finally like kisses her best friend and the whole story she'd been like acting out in violence because she did not know like what to do with all the feelings inside her and one thing that she did was like smash um this old lady's like windows <laughs> and tried to smash like a glass display case like she'd just be smashing she'd be raging you know what i mean and she kisses this girl for the first time and she goes kissing girls comes easy like breaking windows i would like to write that i wish i was the person who wrote that line like how is it horrifying and like giving a glimpse of this person's mental state but also beautiful and fragile at the same time like uh and this book is filled with quotes like that i really want to reread it and go back and highlight because I'm in love with this book. I'm in love with it. Five stars. I cannot believe I did not know of this book's existence until now. However, this is not light. You know, remember, this is horror. Trigger warnings for a lot of things, including animal death. I just have to say that or else y'all take my recommendations and come back and get mad at me in the comments as if it's my fault that you didn't look up your own fucking triggers. But yeah. Anyway... We're moving on to the next book. I'm gonna be diving into Audition. It's obviously another short horror. That's the theme of this vlog. And it's about this guy who I think his wife passes away. Yeah, so he's a widower and he's lived alone with his son since his wife died. And he decides that it's time to remarry, but he's scared to go just, you know, put himself back onto the dating scene. So him and his friend, who's like a film guy, hold an audition where they're like vetting women and trying to find him a new wife. I'm excited to jump in. See you when I see you. Hi besties. I am fully ready. As you can see, I only have one more meeting and then I get to go drink wine with my friend. So I'm very excited. I just got like, you know, all dolled up. I'm feeling myself. Here's the fit. We got like this little skirt with a bodysuit, with the Slytherin earrings. <laughs> Not actually Slytherin, just anything green. I'm like, wow, my Slytherin soul is jumping out. There's a plane. It's literally gonna crash into me. Please stop. So yeah, I haven't read anything. I just, I'm pretty. That's my update. <laughs> We forgot to vlog. How will we go on? I forgot to vlog us at wine. We were at a really cute winery, but now we're eating Whataburger because that's what you do, you know? But tomorrow's single de Mayo, so. So you'll get some good vlog. Vlog. Mm. Vlog footage! The vlog's a flop. Hey y'all. It is midnight. There's a big ass storm. Um, I'm waiting to see if my client that I have tomorrow morning is going to confirm their session and email me back. So I can know if I have to wake up at the ass crack of dawn. <laughs> I have to wait up here. So I figured I would start audition. Um, I went a whole day without reading. Well, since this morning, since I finished that first book. So I figured I might as well start this one while I wait. Also, if you're out there and you have a therapist, there's also a storm. I don't know if you saw that. I'm going to read this book um, and hopefully not get sucked back into TikTok. The talk gets me every time, uh, especially when people are clowning on bad music. Can we just talk about something really quick? This is not book related. Do y'all have songs that just give you like the rage? You know what I'm talking about? Like songs that just give you like unexplainable rage that cannot be matched by literally anything else. I'll give you some examples. 
A, B, C, D, E, F, U, High Hopes by Panic at the Disco, Anything by Imagine Dragons, Ooh, I Think That I Found Myself a Cheerleader. You know what I'm talking about. Like, this is the brand of songs that I just, they give me rage. Fucking fight song. Oh my god. The TikTok song. There's so many TikTok songs like this. The I am woman, I am female. Like that girl that like does that. Uh, I want to grab her by the throat. <laughs> and I've been thinking about that ever since I saw a TikTok about it. And feeling the rage. Let me know your rage song down below. Like a song that you hear and immediately you're no you're out if it starts playing a trader joe's you're leaving your basket it's literally a bit abandoned anyway that's what i got going on i don't know i just like talking to y'all is that a crime is that a crime i feel like i'm you know doing my hrh vibes where i start fighting with nobody fighting the air is that a crime <laughs> okay i'm gonna read my book hi friends after staying up until two in the morning <laughs> I'm fine. I'm up bright and early for my sessions and while I was getting ready, walking the dogs, etc., I actually was listening to the audio for audition and I got to page 120 out of 190. So I only have 70 pages left. I'm definitely gonna finish this one today, but I'm just not, I'm just not seeing what everybody else be seeing with this one. I don't know, I don't know. I like, the commentary when they're talking about Japanese culture and just like materialism and like nationalism and just things like that. I vibe, but also like this is a horror book. And if I wanted to pick up a commentary on fucking Japanese society, I would have done that. But I picked up a horror book, you know, like I am looking for the horror. This is definitely feeling like a slow burn. And I heard this was like pretty intense. So I'm like, where is it? What am I missing? Like, look at the cover. It's like an eye with blood. I'm like, can I get some of that please? Can I please get some of that? Because right now I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling that. I'm feeling slow. I'm feeling bored. <sighs> so that's where I'm at. I gotta go drive to my session. I am home from my morning sessions. It's Cinco de Mayo, so I'm about to go get a margarita with Cortland, my maid of honor, my bestie girl. We're also gonna go to a half price books that is closing down. So they're having like the mega, mega of all mega sales. Um, so obviously I'm excited about that. But I just made it to the 80% mark of audition. Y'all, nothing's happening. 200 pages. I don't think it's it's worth it to read, even if something pops the fuck off at the end. Who knows? Maybe I'll be eating my words in my final update. But like... <sighs> Can y'all please look at this? Can y'all please? Oh, she's glossy. <laughs> I'm home. I didn't end up buying anything at the half price books because we were scammed. They shut down. There's no sale. So we went and ate some wonderful food and drank some wonderful drinks. And it's Cinco de Mayo, so we had some marks. And now I'm home trying to finish this book. But the only thing that's engaging me is the descriptions of food. And that ain't me. I don't know what is, but like, let me show, let me, hear me out. Yogurt, salmon roe and soy sauce, deep fried tofu, cabbage roll. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. That sounds so good. Give me that salmon roe. Give me it. I want it now. Hey vlog. I, I don't like this book. <laughs> I just took probably 40 minutes to read 25 pages. Blink, blink, blink. 
That's all I have to say. And the ending was stupid. I just like this book actually was putting me to sleep. So I'm gonna give it two stars. I don't think this was one star level. Like, sure, it had something to say, I guess. I didn't really wanna hear it. But if you wanna hear something like this, that's fine. You could enjoy this. I hated the sexism of the main character. I don't care if that was supposed to be the point of the book. It was not fun to read and I don't think it really went anywhere. And I don't like playing on the trope of this like crazy woman, like the crazy woman trope, I fucking hate it. And I don't, I don't even care if it was trying to have like commentary. I don't like it. Two stars, it's a two star, I'm so sorry. Sorry, McKay, you gave me this recommendation. <gasps> Look at all, all the eyes here, wow. I'm sorry, I didn't like your recommendation. Love you, bestie. Okay, bye. I just wanna bake like a little treat. I just need a treat, you know, I deserve a treat. So I'm gonna bake something. And while I'm doing that, I'm also gonna start Fierce Kingdom by Jin Phillips. Also love the name Jin, by the way. I think that's very cute, very creative. Like, Jin? I like it, Picasso. You know what I mean? This is a short little thriller horror moment about a mother and a son who get trapped in a zoo overnight for the next three hours. So the entire book takes place over three hours and it sounds like a whole ride. Oh my God, the, not the nap hair. Oh my gosh. Why does it sound like Jennifer Coolidge? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to try to find the audio for this one so I can start it while I bake and I will come back to you when I have thoughts. Can we talk about this packaging? <laughs> For the marshmallow cream, it's giving. It's giving. <gasps> the rainbow, that little guy. Boba is freaking out about it. I know, bestie. I literally know, besties. It's crazy. It is so cute. Oh my God, jump about it. Jump about it. Oh my God. s'mores bars actually turned out really good i just have to cut them into bars because <laughs> right now it's a s'more slab um but i cannot do that because i am so sucked into this book holy crap holy shit it is so good oh my god i i'm a third of the way through and it's been like feels like not even an hour yeah, like barely an hour. <laughs> huh? I'm like speeding through this book. It is so, so fast paced. Obviously I told y'all like the whole thing takes place over three hours. And I thought it was gonna be more of like a, ooh, they get trapped in the zoo and there's like an animal on the loose. No, this is an active shooter situation. It's literally crazy. I cannot stop reading. I cannot put this book down. I cannot remember the last time I read a book this fast paced where I was just like flipping, flipping, flipping pages, needing to know exactly what was going on. It's just flying by and it's not like it's like surface level. It honestly has a lot of depth to it. The writing is absolutely beautiful. The mother-son relationship is beautiful. We also get like little sneak peeks of other people who are trapped in the zoo and just seeing that they're like not alone is interesting and like hearing the little snippets of stories from those people. But obviously the main people that we're following is the mother and the son. And the son is so sweet. He's literally four years old and he's trying to be like so good and so quiet and just like, 
It is so heartbreaking. I'm loving this book so much. <gasps> okay, and I'm only a third of the way through. I will let you know when I'm two thirds of the way through. We're at 6.28 p.m. right now and I cannot wait to get back into it. Hi vlog, you're gonna be hearing Chihuahua scurrying around during this update. I don't know what's going on with them. <laughs> they are on one, um, but I'm about to finally go to the gym like I've been saying I need to do this like whole vlog um avoiding cam <laughs> going to the gym with cam because he literally takes 80 million hours and does like 80 million things and i just sit there and literally run on a treadmill so but here i am going aren't you proud of me um and i don't have really a reading update like oh my god can i pick up a fucking book come on i did not make any more progress. I'm still at the 35-ish percent mark of Fierce Kingdom. So I'm going to go to the gym and I think I might do like my little running routine and then while Cameron is still like, I don't know, doing whatever he does in the corner with like weights and things, I think I might just find the audiobook of Fierce Kingdom and put that on and just like walk on the treadmill um because i cannot listen to audiobooks while i run i i be in my zone you know what i mean I actually made it to the 67% mark. I am two thirds of the way through Fierce Kingdom just by, you know, picking up the audio and listening to it after I was walking. I am already at the two thirds mark, which is crazy. This book is so fast paced um, and there's just a lot going on. Like there's never been a moment when my attention has wavered. Our two main characters are, we're kind of seeing how their plot is converging with the couple other characters that we've seen like little sprinkled chapters with POVs from them. And then we're also getting more POVs from the shooters, which is just super interesting to see like how their brains are working and what they're thinking in these moments, but it's really good. I'm really identifying with our main female character. I love a strong main female character that I can kind of latch onto and root for. And a lot of the descriptions when she's like thinking about her past and like how it's led her here and thinking about her son and how her son has changed her life. Like just a lot of that is like super emotional and beautifully written and it is so, jarring almost to have this like beautiful prose in the middle of a super high octane fast paced thriller but it just really works i really 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 like this book and i cannot wait to finish it up and give you my final review i do have to go run some errands so let's go am i gonna be screlting lana del rey the whole time i'm driving around today yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah oh yeah duh mm -hmm. it's only natural y'all we're doing a part two of the absolutely unhinged midnight sprints uh with mckay because he is my best friend in the world and i'm gonna go to asia literally don't at me it's happening uh when i get money but i'm trying to finish this book it's not really vibing with me not because i don't like it just because i'm drunk uh, i got home from karaoke and i'm like you know what i really like this book i don't want to read it when i'm drunk um we're just both two little black boxes right now because i'm about to go edit my video so let's do that hello vlog it has been a couple days i have officially graduated walked this stage even though i graduated six months ago it's fine. So I am here to close out this vlog because in that time I did finish Fierce Kingdom. I just, you know, was running around doing a lot of things, running on one hour of sleep because I'm a crazy person, but I did finish this book and I gave it five stars as I'm sure you could have guessed just by watching the clips of me making progress through this book. It was so, so beautifully written, but it wasn't boring. And I feel like when there's flowery, like beautiful, well thought out writing in a thriller, it's usually very slow paced and can sometimes get 
boring, it feels like, you know, that's not what I signed up for kind of thing, but I never felt that in this book. It kept the fast pace. Like this whole book, again, takes place over three hours, but it's still so beautiful. And I think it does that by diving into the psychology of the situation. Like, what is it like mentally to be caught in a zoo during an active shooter situation and not only the psychology of the victims but we also dabble into the mindset of the killers as well and i thought the ending was just like very poetic very a full circle moment and i just loved it five stars i highly 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 recommend this one and i am so blown away that three out of five books I picked up for this vlog ended up being five stars. We also had a 4.5 out of five star. Like this vlog was just so successful. We're not gonna talk about the audition. We're literally not gonna talk about her. Literally just pretend like that didn't happen <laughs> because everything else I read for this vlog was just so good. And I hope you got some good horror recs from this video. If you enjoyed what you watched in this vlog today, don't forget to give me a like on this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week i will see you in my next one bye